Nick Robinson here for Polygon and Phil Kohler Hello. for Polygon. How's it going? It's going great. Uh, Phil, you and I have one very important thing in common. Mm -hmm. Uh, we both played the brand new Legend of Zelda game yes. at E3 2016. Breath of the Wild? Breath of the Wild. Is that what it's called? I believe that's correct. Yeah. We haven't talked about this at all yet, and I'm yes. really curious to just get your initial thoughts. I know what mine are. Well, and I've seen a lot of people talking about, it seems like Zelda finally embracing the sort of Elder Scrolls, Skyrim style. Yes. Uh, one, one way that they do that, uh, I don't know if you're a fan of Morrowind, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I interviewed IG Anuma. Yeah. Um, the creator of the Zelda, or not the creator, but the, the director. Current showrunner, yeah, I guess. current runner of the Zelda series. And uh, he told me that if you want to start playing his this game and just beeline for the final boss, not do any of the story content, not yeah. do any of the side content, just go fight the final boss without understanding anything that's happening, you can do it. That's an option? That's, that is he wild. He said, I built this game so that you could do that. He's like, I don't recommend it. I think that's a bad way to play, but I built it so that you can do it. That's that's what strikes me about this game. It is built so that you can do whatever you want. Yeah, and I, that's so unlike any previous Zelda game. Totally. The game is so big, and the demo they showed us is so big and open, and you can kind of go do anything. Yeah. So I feel like we both played quite a bit of it, but I feel like we probably had very different experiences in terms of I, what we discovered, yes. what we went to do. Um, so like I, I messed around. I went to one of the... Uh, they have these little mini dungeons right. called uh, Shrines. Mm -hmm. Shrine of Trials, I think is what it's called. And I went and messed around with one of those for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I did the inverse, where I spent virtually all my time running around the overworld. I did one of the dungeons, but the one I did was uh, based around the magnetic, almost psyops abilities. Did you mess with that at all? So I, I picked that up and tried learning how to use yeah. it, but I couldn't find anything that worked on it. Yeah, you got to be in some specific areas. But like one, one of my favorite moments with that particular power uh, is uh, there's a sequence where uh, you come towards this sort of, there's a pond with this sort of, I guess it's more of a, more of a, where does Shrek live? A bog? A swamp. It's like a swamp. It's like <laughs> a lethal swamp with this brown goop in it. When you step in it, you immediately die. Sure. Uh, and in the middle of it are two treasure chests. And so I, I found no way to get over there. I was like trying everything. I tried shooting with arrows, nothing worked. Then I went over to a lake that was like about a minute and a half walk away. Went into the bottom of it, used the magneto powers that Link now has to dredge up from the bottom of the lake this giant metal plank. Use it as a, like, walk back with that thing mm -hmm. and then use it as a bridge to get there. And, like, I know that there were other ways to solve that that I, yeah. that I could have done. And that's the recurring thing for me is I, I, I think you really hit on something important when you said we had very different experiences. Not just because you went for the sort of... Uh, story or, or puzzle linear beats yes. and I was in the open world, but also because when you're in that open world, anything can happen, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much going on. At one point I, I walked into an encampment of the uh, goblin creatures mm -hmm. and they had a, a little um, explosive barrel right next to them. Yeah. This was in, we had one demo where we had all of our abilities and weapons and stuff, and one demo where we didn't. And I hadn't picked up a bow yet, right. so I had no way to shoot that explosive barrel so I uh, threw my sword at it. Mm -hmm. You can just throw any weapon right. you have um, and use that to blow it up. That's awesome. I, my experience with the thrown weapons thing, because th there's kind of a trade-off, right? You can throw any weapon. You can throw the first sword yeah. you get, uh, but it almost always gets destroyed. Yes. When you throw a weapon, it's almost always gone immediately. Yeah, that, was, that sword was, was completely gone. Yeah. So one experience I had was I fired a, a flaming arrow into uh, a patch of grass and I had some torches on me that were not lit and I was like trying to light them. So I was like, what do I do? How to get them on fire? Oh, I know, fire arrow into the grass. So I stick my torch in the fire arrow. My torch is now on fire. I spot two moblins uh, coming towards me with clubs. So I'm like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna throw this flaming torch at them. So I throw it at them and uh, it kind of goes in between them. And rather oh, than no. hurt them, it sets both of their clubs on fire and now they're chasing me with flaming clubs. And I, I love that <laughs> because that was something that I'm pretty sure only happened in my playthrough. And I have like 15 other stories yeah. like that. Like, and that's what's so cool about this game to me is that Zelda has never, ever, ever been about like emergent narrative. Yeah. And it's so cool to see them like, something I keep coming back to, I was talking about this with, with Justin and Russ is, this game feels like an acknowledgement that the people who have been working on Zelda are playing other people's video games and yeah. learning lessons from them. And that is so new. Um, we, we put up some video on, on our channel, youtube.com slash polygon. Uh, I think probably yesterday at this point, uh, and it, it had uh, I think over 50 minutes, I think, of gameplay from my session. And one thing that I did 
one of the many things I did to kind of set my session apart from other people who played the game was I Im almost immediately took all of Link's clothes off and played through the entire thing mm -hmm. nude, not nude, I guess there's like some sort of short shorts boxer situation, but like no armor, so I was taking a lot of damage. Um, and uh, one of my favorite things that happened, uh, and I, I think maybe this is something like, self-imposed challenge is like a very modern, very Dark Souls thing, like yeah. doing a naked run of Dark Souls is a thing. Um, my favorite moments in this were moments where I was kind of on my heels with no resources. There was one moment where I had no shield and I was there was like five moblins and I had this giant leaf that I could use as a fan. So I walked up to the moblins, blew them with it, not knowing what it would do. It knocked their shield and bow out of their hands and swords and I would like really quickly scramble to pick up their weapons before they could and then all of a sudden I had a shield and could fight yeah. them and was able to like get through that sequence successfully. But like, I think it's way harder than a normal Zelda game. They're way more threats to your existence. Um, it's just a really weird, unique game. Um, if you haven't seen the gameplay that we've posted, you should absolutely watch it if you have any interest in this game. I, I can't wait to see what the, the general public thinks of this game when they get their when hands on it. When it comes out, there's just going to be all these stories that people are yes. hearing, and that's exciting. It's a, it's a surprisingly physics-driven story generator, and that is something that has all the games ever been before. So I'm, I am more than thrilled with, yeah. with what I saw. So th that's it from us on uh, The Legend of Zelda. Uh, we've got plenty of more videos going up all throughout E3 week and beyond here on youtube.com slash polygon or on polygon.com proper. Uh, I've been Nick Robinson, this is Phil Kohler, and thank you so much for watching.